name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Let's go ahead and start with the song first, and then we'll start our lesson. <laughs> Time is what we spend with our Savior during Lent And the Gospel in the Mass has a message that He sent When we fast and pray we learn to live by every word He said The first thing we learn to keep, spiritual work secret and deep When we offer alms we say, to you only Lord I pay no one sees me except my Lord, who grants the heavenly reward. Happy time is what we spend with our Savior during Lent. And the Gospel in the Mass has a message that He sent. When we fast and pray, we learn to live by every word He said. The first week we learn to seek the kingdom of God and to keep our eyes focused on the Lord who clothes the grass of the fields. He feeds the birds of the air who can neither sow nor reap. Happy time is what we spend with our Savior during Lent and the gospel in the Mass has a message that He sent. When we fast and pray we learn to live by every word He said. Second Second week is the temptation by the devil on the mount. Third week is the prodigal son. Can you tell me how he won? And who is the real father waiting there for you to come? Happy time is what we spend with our Savior during Lent. And the gospel in the Mass has a message that he sent. When we fast and pray, we learn to live by every word he said. Fourth week is the Samaritan woman with a repeated sin she dwelt. And six hours Jesus walked just to meet her at the well. He saved her from all her sins to everyone she ran to tell. Happy time is what we spend with our Savior during Lent. And the Gospel in the Mass has a message that He sent. When we fast and pray, we learn to live by every word He said. The fifth is the crippled man who was lying sick in bed. Thirty-eight years he cannot move, no one helps him as he said. Till the Lord met him and spoke, rise, take up your bed and walk. Happy time is what we spend with our Savior during Lent. And the Gospel in the Mass has a message that He sent. When we fast and pray, we learn to live by every word He said. Six week is the man born blind. He can't see nor can he find how to go and where to be. For he has no eyes to see, but the Lord opened his eyes, now he is able to see. Happy time is what we spend with our Savior during Lent, and the Gospel in the Mass has a message that he sent. When we fast and pray, we learn to live by every word he said. Seventh week is Palm Sunday, when we receive you in our hearts. Clothes and garments we're spreading, and the court treads on to pass. Son of David, save us all. Hosanna, we won't cease to call. Happy time is what we spend with our Savior during Lent. And the gospel in the Mass has a message that He sent. When we fast and pray, we learn to live by every word He said. Today, the lesson is about the paralytic man. Let's read the Bible before we start the lesson. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, 
there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches, and these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water, and whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured? It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, he who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in a temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Honor the Father and the Son. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My Father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said to God, was his father making himself equal with God. Glory be to God forever and ever, amen. Now let's get started with the story. One day there was a feast and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and on his way there, there was a pool called Bethesda. And that's the first thing I want you to learn here is uh, the pool, pool's name is Bethesda, with five porches around it. There are many people go to that pool and there's an angel that comes to the pool every year, one time, stir up the pool, touches the pool, and whoever goes in that pool, the very first person get healed from whatever that person has. Now, There was a man who was paralyzed for 38 years. He was sitting there, staying in the pool, hoping for that someone will take him and go and drop him off, right, drop him inside that pool right after the angel stares up the pool or touches the pool. Now Jesus saw him laying, lying there and he had a compassion upon him. So Jesus went to him, and that's where our lesson is going to start today. The very first thing that Jesus told us, that person, that paralyzed man, um, he said, do you want to be made well? Before we get to that point, what made that man cannot walk anymore? Um, it could be leukemia, could be cancer, could be virus, could be anything that stopped this man physically from moving and walking, going to the pool or getting sick. That's physically. Spiritually, what is, why do we have this story in the Bible? This man has been sick for 38 years and Whatever he got physically, which is, could be a virus, like I said, or anything, but spiritually, it could be his sin. 
and the sin stops him from walking or growing in Jesus, in the church, and uh, spiritually. So that's exactly what happened. 38, it could be 38 years, it could be 38 months, it could be 38 days, 38 weeks, whatever. Now, let's get back to the first question that Jesus asked him. Jesus told him, do you want to be made well? When I read this story, it's just is strange. And I just, just think about it. Jesus knows everything. He knows that this guy, this man is sitting there for 38 years beside the pool. And it means something obvious that he's sitting there because he is waiting for something. Probably the angel will come one night where everybody else is sleeping in the city and he is the only person around this pool so he can have the chance to go inside the pool and get healed. That means this man is so ready for many years to go to that pool. But when Jesus asked him that question, do you want to be made well? There are too many, um, there are too many things. Um, the first thing is, why didn't you just ask myself, why didn't Jesus just say, you know what? Just come on, let me help you. You know, let me help you. I know everything. I know how to heal you. I know your, your medicine. You know what? Let me just carry you, hold you, or whatever, help you, and push you to the pool, and you get healed, and everything will be fine. Why Jesus didn't do that? He didn't do it. He first of all said, do you want to be made well? So why did Jesus ask that question? It is obviously clear that the man needs help because he stays there for 38 years. There are multiple reasons here. Number one, you cannot help someone who does not need your help. When you are in a sin, when you lie too much, when you cheat, when you do something and you feel like, okay, I want to continue cheating because it may make me get what I want. I want to, to continue not listening to my parents because, because I want because I feel like I feel happy when I watch more TV or when I do the stuff that I want to do, not my parents want to do. That's a sin, by the way. And makes me feel happy. Now, when Jesus heals you, he first of all needs to ask you, do you want to be made well? So you need to ask for his help first. Number two, there are many people around us don't want to be healed. Even this guy, even if this man, it's obvious that he's sitting there for 38 years and probably he doesn't want anybody to heal him. He just say, okay, yes, I want someone to push me to the pool so I can get healed, but he is not ready yet. That's physically. How about you spiritually? How is that related? to you, me, and everybody else. Sometimes we come to the church and we wear the tonia and take the communion every single week for 38 years, 38 months, 38 days. And we seek forgiveness from the priest in the confession and confession and so on and so forth. But we're not ready yet. We're not ready to get healed yet. And every single time we come to the church, we hear God telling us, do you want to be made well? Do you want to get out of this sin? Whether from Abuna the priest, the Bible, the word, someone in the church, the cynic stars, they, they, whatever, any the readings, the Bible, anything. But many times that we say, no, okay, I'm coming to church. I'll attend the Sunday school. But tomorrow when I go to school, I'm going to continue cheating from my classmates because it makes me get higher grades and it helps me, which is not good. The other thing is when God or when Jesus asked him that question, because he wants to give him a chance to ask. 
And that's the same way with us. Jesus wants to give us a chance to ask him, to ask him what we need. And the expectation is, let's look at what the man says. I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. He's asking. Well, so what God wants us to say is, God, listen, I'm trying. I'm sitting here in the same exact sin. I do the same thing for many days, many months, for a couple of years, whatever. And, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying not to lie. I'm trying not to, um, I'm trying to be a nice person and listen to what mom and dad says, but I can't. Please, I need your help. I am weak and I need you to help me to overcome this and be a nice person at a church, school, home, my brothers and sisters, and everyone else around me. That's exactly what God wants us to say. He wants us to be humble and ask him. Now, the next one is, when see Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. So there are two strange questions here. The first one we just discussed, do you want to be made well? The second one is when he says, okay, rise, great, perfect. Rise, okay, so I'm gonna rise, you're gonna heal me, you're gonna do the miracle. Thank you, God, for everything. Let's move on. You know, I'm so proud, I'm so excited. But it's a strange thing to take when Jesus says, take up your bed and walk. You know, sometimes it's 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 a rare thing, but um some from like some kids say, you know what, why do I have to clean up after myself? Why do I have to, uh, I ate food and why do I have to take my plate and put it in the uh, sink or whatever? It's not in the Bible. No, it is in the Bible. Like, guess what happens? Today's lesson right here. When he says, take up your bed and walk. Jesus, number one, he wants to tell him that I don't want you to wake up to the like, to, I don't want to hear you. And you get too excited. You leave here, you leave your bed for someone else to carry it for you. Same thing with you. Same thing with you physically, physically, when you drink your milk or whatever you wanna drink because you're fasting now, all right? Make sure, make sure you either put the cup in the sink or whatever, if it's a plastic cup or it's in the trash. If you eat on a plate, make sure you clean your plate or put it whatever, whatever the, your mom's telling you to do. Pick up your trash after you. Push your chairs in if you're sitting in a church, in front of the school, at school, anywhere. In the classroom, you gotta be a good citizen. And is that in the, in the Bible? Yes, it is. When Jesus told the man, rise, take up your bed and dwell. That's physically. Now, spiritually, what does it mean, take up your bed and walk? Spiritually means Jesus is telling the guy, the man who was sitting for 38 years, do not leave your bed here. The symbol of that bed, it means our sin. So if you make a sin, Jesus wants you to take up your sin, take it somewhere away, throw it in the trash, destroy it. So you don't have to come, so you can't come back to it. I don't want you to leave your bed here. You go somewhere and after a day or two, you come back and you remember, your, you see your bed and you remember it. You see your sin and you remember it. And you see, okay, yes, I remember when I, five, five months ago when I cheated on that test, okay, um, and you remember, cheating that test was really, okay. I didn't study for that test, and I moved from 50% to 100%, 90%. Jesus not, doesn't want us to do that. He wants us, if you confess in your sin, you need to destroy what causes that sin, destroy your bed so you don't come back to it later. 
and immediately the man was made well. He took up his bed and walked, but that day was a Sabbath. The strict Jews said to him, it is not lawful for you to carry your bed on a Sabbath. He who made, who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. But the man did not know who healed him. This is a very important thing here. The man did not know who healed him. He didn't know if it's Jesus or someone else who healed him. That's the same thing with us. God sometimes wants to heal us. And sometimes ask us, do you want to be healed indirectly? Like you don't have to have God like appear to you somewhere and tells you, okay, do you want to be healed? Or um, do you want to uh, stop making that sin or whatever? It doesn't have to be direct. It could be indirect, such as from a church, the Bible, the reading. It could be from a poor man that you meet in the street. Could be someone from the TV, from whatever you're watching. Sometimes like there is a word or a sentence. It's just, it hits my mind. And this is what I feel like God wants to tell me that. That's what I want. This is what God is telling me here. Um, could be someone needs help. Could be uh, a word in the school. Someone says something, all right? In the street, you hear it from somewhere. Okay, and you feel like this word is from God. So that is... You know, sometimes you need to open your mind to listen where the word of God is. Let me end my lesson today with a little story that is very famous. We have a very famous um, um, monk, his name Abba Bishoy, uh, the beloved. And Abba Bishoy was very famous of uh, back in the days in Egypt, uh, you know, as right now, there's no asphalt, there is no, like, there's a lot of desert, and people don't wear shoes, they wear sandals, so it was a long distance to the, go to the monastery, and that monk, every person who comes to the monastery, all right, every single person that he is, he, that he sees, he brings him to his room, and washes his feet from all the dirt, all the dust, and let him go to the monastery every single time. So God loves that. And one day, God shows up to him, um, and he washed God's um, feet. And this incident repeated, and he told all the monks about that. So the monk felt like, wow, this is great. We would love to see God. Can you please speak with God, with Jesus, and tell him, we desperately need to see you. We desperately need to see you a lot. So Jesus said, sure, yes. And Jesus told them, okay, meet me somewhere in the desert up all the top of the desert, and you know, top of the mountain. I will be there so I can meet you. So add that one, give them the time and, and the day. So all the monks in that monastery were so excited, waiting for that day. Everybody took a really nice shower and nice clothes, clean clothes. And everybody was rushing to the mountain. Abba Bishoy the Great, Abba Bishoy the Beloved, he was old at that time. And he was so, uh, like, you know, the way he walks was not as fast as the other monks. So the monks, as they are climbing the mountain to go and see Jesus, they saw a poor man, and the poor man asked them, where everybody's going? Why are you running all the way to the mountain? Um, and everybody says, we're going to see Jesus. And the poor man, the very old poor man told them, can you please carry me? Can you please take me so I can see Jesus with you? Can you please do that? And every single one of those monks says no. Um, we're in hurry. We wanna. We don't want to miss Jesus. If we carry you, you're going to stop us from running, and we're not going to see Jesus. And they just left him. Left him like this in the, in the mountain. And he says, No, you just take your time and come and meet us there. If by the time you come there, 
by the time you come to the top of the mountain, you're probably not going to be able to see Jesus, but because we are youth, we are young, and we can run, we will see him. Now, at the end of the story, at the end of the time, like, like after that, Ava Bishoy, Ava Bishoy was like walking ahead, his, his stick in his hand and trying to walk uh, in the mountain. And Ava Bishoy saw that poor man, and, and the poor man told Ava Bishoy, I know you are too old, and everyone else said they can't carry me. Can you please carry me to go to the mountain with you so I can't see Jesus like you and everybody else? I would love to do that, and I do appreciate it. And guess what happens? Ava Bishoy said, sure. Yes, let's, you know, I am too old. I understand that, but I will try my best to carry you. And Ava Bishoy and like, you know what? Let's come to my shoulder. And Ava Bishoy had the stick in his hand, and he's carrying the old man, all right, and just walking. So instead of Ava Bishoy walking, I would say, let me give an example, one mile an hour. So now he's walking like point, it was like, 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 half a mile an hour or quarter of a mile an hour. So he is slowing Ava Bishoy down to climb the mountain and probably Ava Bishoy will not be able to get to the end of the mountain because by, by, because by the time he gets there, he's going to be so tired. He's going to pass out before he gets there. So as Ava Bishoy carrying the old poor man in his shoulder, the old poor man becomes very, very light and lighter and lighter and lighter until to the point where Ava Bishoy can't feel him. It's like, I don't feel you. Can you? I don't feel anything. Like, it's like, okay, thank you, God, for helping me. And then the man, the man, the poor man becomes heavier and heavier and heavier till the point to the point where Ava Bishoy can't walk anymore. Can't walk anymore. And then it's like, oh, I mean, it seems like I'm getting so tired right now. I'm getting so tired. And then it becomes, and the poor man becomes lighter and lighter and lighter. It's like, okay, well, I'm sure I started to feel something in there. It's like, hmm, I think there's something in there. So I'll be sure I looked at, you know, his head and his shoulder, looked at his feet, and he found what? He found the signs of the nails of Jesus and the nail and the poor man it's like jesus jesus i saw you and then jesus disappeared and then after that all of the other monks coming down from the top of the mountain after waiting for hours until i came down was like Ava Bishoy, where is jesus they saw Ava Bishoy sitting sitting he did not go all the way up to the mountain sitting in the middle of the mountain singing and and praising God, and the other monk says, you're sitting here praising God, and we're waiting over there on the top for God to come, and he never came. You lied to us. He said, no, Jesus came. I saw him, but you guys did not see him. Where? Where did you see him? He is the poor man. He was asking every and each one of you to carry him, and each one of you refused to do that. That is Jesus. Same thing happens with us. That paralyzed man did not know Jesus. And Jesus, when Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? The man didn't know who you are, who Jesus is. But the man, because he has faith, and he took that word, said, yes, I want to be healed. I am so ready to change. I want to be healed. Same thing with us. Sometimes God speaks with us, speaks to us indirectly through the church, through Abuna, through friends, parents, a word, TV, a book that you read, something in the school, and we should to say, take some action. Say, yes, God, I am ready. You know what? I feel like this word is coming to me and I want to change. I hope that you have learned something about today's lesson and by next week we'll try to uh, get another one try to do a virtual class where um, instead of um, 
recorded class will be interacting and have some questions and answers. Uh, I hope and I pray that you are safe and all your parents in Jesus our Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen.